All right, good morning. We know that most of you are in PDs at your buildings or virtually uh, in PDs, so this is going to be typed, and you know we'll be able to watch it later um, on the NTU website or on our NTU YouTube channel. So we, in advance of this meeting, we had you guys send questions to the Office of uh, Student Support Services and the Office of Special Ed. So we have the Assistant Superintendent and we have the Director of, of Special Ed here. So we're gonna turn it over to them. I can see that people are popping up already. Some of you, in some of your cases, we know that your administrator allowed you to do this today as your PD. So we know that some of them will be popping in. Uh, I wish this was done after our PDs. Kamisha, that's what we just said. That's why it's being taped. You'll be able to watch it as many times as you want with a glass of wine over the Labor Day weekend. Um, we're up to 2025. Grace is watching. Let me wave to her. Yvette, is there? Is there school tomorrow? Yeah. For the 7,000th time. <laughs> no. Negative. Read your last three NTU updates, emails, Facebook, social messages. No trabajo tomorrow, mañana. All right. This should be done after school. We know that. It's going to be taped. Lupe, you'll be able to watch it as many times as you want. So now I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. NTU, the teachers support staff, we want to welcome you to our first special education town hall on September 3rd. At this time, I'd like to introduce Ms. Carolyn Granada, the Assistant Superintendent for the Office of Special Education and the Office of Student Supports. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the 2020-2021 school year. Um, first of all, we'd like to thank the Newark Teachers Union for allowing us and providing this virtual uh, town hall to the community and for the, the staff in, in all the schools. Our purpose to, for today's presentation is to answer questions from the community and from the schools. We know that the past few months have been extremely difficult for you all, for families, but those um, with students that have IEPs have especially taken um, a very, very uh, difficult um, hit during this pandemic. Um, the North Board of Education has been working hard uh, to develop plans for students to return to school. At this time, we know students will begin the year virtually with remote learning from September to November 17th. The Office of Special Ed is working to ensure special education students receive, um, receive their IEP mandates services during the remote learning period. We wish you an incredible school year and we're here to support you all. Um, I'd like to take it back to Marilyn Mitchell, our director. Thank you. Good morning again. I'd just like to thank Ms. Granado for her support as we began this school year. So I just want to take some time to tell you the Office of Special Education is excited to be here and share some information from the 2020-20 school year. As you know, special education is a service which supplements general education, so you will hear about general education plans because it applies to special education too. We know that special education is an individual plan that's designed to meet the needs of the student. Each student will be considered as plans are developed and some may need more support than others. Our office will assist you and parents in developing those plans. Today's presentation will be a snapshot. We know many of you have questions and concerns and we want this opportunity to share where we are right now. As new information becomes available, or new constraints occur, we will adjust our plans. Our special education team is an amazing group. Collectively, they have the depth and breadth of knowledge along with the years of experience in this field. Our commitment to this community is we work together for students. We will collaborate with building administrators, provide training for staff, and most importantly, partner with parents. We bring our best efforts every day. We know special education is a calling as much as a profession. We have passionate, dedicated staff who are flexible as students need them to be. As we launch into this presentation, we want to thank you again, and we look forward to providing updates during the school year. At this time, we're going to introduce our special education administrators. 
We have a Christina Panetti who will come um, later on. We have a Candace Wells. We have that's over instructional program. We have Adriana D. Giovanni. That's over the initial evaluation center. We have Dr. Joe Bresnahan. He's over the Southwest Ward, and we have Dr. Shirley Fonseca. She's over the North Ward. We have two supervisors who are not here, which is Dr. Pia Moore. She's over the high schools. Ms. Cheryl Myrie. She's over preschool. And we also have an instructional specialist, Catherine Ogerto. She's over autism. So the agenda for today will be the introductions, which we just, which we just done an overview of the remote learning plan, instructional services and supports, evaluations, IEP meetings, related services, trainings, and most of all, we'll get to all those questions you email to Ms. Granado and myself. So at this time, I will turn it over to Candace Wells, who will talk about instructional programs. Good morning, everyone. Just to share a few details with you regarding instructional programming. I, at first, would like to share with you what's happening district-wide and then share with you how the Office of Special Ed will support. District-wide, remote learning includes teachers available synchronously, that is, in real time, to engage with students. So what does the schedule look like? For pre-K, the pre-K will follow the schedule created by the creative curriculum. For grades K to three, there will be instructional time dedicated to tutoring sessions, ELA and social studies combined, phonics, math, science, and the building administrators will work with teachers to include physical education, performing arts, and world languages. For grades four to eight, the sessions real time with teachers will also include tutoring period, a session for language arts, time for social studies, time for science, and again, the principals will work with teachers to collaborate regarding time dedicated to phys ed, performing arts, and world language. For grades four to eight, in this group, there's time dedicated for tutoring, language arts, social studies, math, science, and again, the building administrators will work with teachers to schedule in physical education, performing arts, and or world language. As it relates to grades nine to 12, there, the schedule will be according to the bell schedule for high school students and that will be determined by each of the high school principals. In addition to supporting remote learning, the Office of Teaching and Learning has also included additional software. These softwares include Lexia Core 5 Reading for grade 5 and Lexia Power Up for grade 6 to 8. For math, there's iReady for grades 5, K to 5 and Alex for grades 6 to 12. Additional software include No Red Ink for grades 6 to 12 and Discovery Educations for grades K to 12. The additional information for these resources just mentioned is available to you online on the NBOE webpage. Also, you can contact your building principals and teachers regarding that information. But we know from the Office of Special Ed, parents and teachers are wondering what does instructional support look like for our exceptional learners. The Office of Special Education has different resources for each of the programs in our offices. We have additional supplementary instructional resources with a focus on the development of literacy skills even while in remote learning. And I would like to share a few of those resources with you now. In our general education with accommodation, with our resource teachers, that's push in or pull out, and for our LDM program, we have each building with a dedicated Wilson reading teacher. Buildings have access to Learning Ally, and these are digital resources or digital books that have accessibility features that can be used with accommodations. Teachers in all of our buildings, including our special ed teachers, will engage with some of the resources that I just shared out with you from Teaching and Learning because those resources also have a lot of embedded differentiations, a lot of embedded accessibility features, which are great tools for our parents and our students to use at home during remote learning. Program. There are supplementary sources through Rethink. Rethink is additional layer for social emotional learning. It has digital resources that parents and students can access at home for ELA and math. Other resources include visual supports for our students regarding expressive or receptive language. 
With our autism program, we, are, we continue to work on transitional skills during this time of remote learning, and that will be done through Spectrum Works. Thinking of our behavior program, there is an additional layer and an inclusion and embedment of social emotional learning as well through the rethink component. There's a component dedicated to nurture heart approach in which those, are spo those supports will be embedded in instruction. For our cognitive impaired program, that will include additional visual supports for our exceptional receptive language needs. And to um, give you information regarding the MDMI program, that program will have supplementary resources through Meville to Weville, assistive technology, and additional visual supports for our exceptional learners with expressive and receptive language needs. I do want to give you addi additional information that speaks to the supports for instructions. What does special education services and support look, look like regarding the instruction that I just shared with you? Teachers and parents will be working to assess curricular resources that have accessibility features. So parents, any of the items and teachers that I just shared with you, make sure you contact your building administrators and leads regarding those resources. And the Office of Special Ed will be here to assist as well. Special Ed teachers will support families um, not only with synchronous access, that is real time, but the creation of learning activities that can be recorded. And these recordings can be done as tutorials to model academic and or executive functioning skills. These resources that are videotaped could then later be used by families according their, to their time frame needs and accessed asynchronously. Additional support will include a visual teacher master schedule. In this visual teacher master schedule, there will be links that a parent or student may need to access throughout the day. Creating a one-stop place in this visual teacher master schedule will allow a family uh, to find all of the links, whether it's to access the teacher's classroom, these uh, links of other service providers like speech related services, and even other specials. There will be, in cases when needed, individualized student schedules. We recognize in the Office of Special Ed that additional needs may present itself because of the age of the student and the disability of the student and the time frame of the families. WebEx Link and a Google Classroom will be combined together, providing that virtual classroom. Teachers designing lessons will continue to include accommodations and specially designed instruction, and that includes supports provided by paraprofessionals. Related services will be provided pull it, push, as a push-in or pull-out model, and you will hear additional information regarding that as well. I'd like to give you a little bit more information as to what the instructional support looks like. Your case managers will work with teachers and parents as well to support access to remote learning. Again, we recognize that the needs of each student must be individualized. So as we do this to implement the services of the IEP during remote learning, there are going to be additional needs identified given the impact of COVID-19. So what does that look like? IEP team members will continue to collaborate virtually will have service logs and then new this year will introduce the family support plan with the layer of the family support couple the IEP case managers can work with teachers and families to determine what is that barrier and to discuss a solution for that barrier the plan will identify its student needs given um, the impact of COVID-19 and remote learning it would take a look at what did the accommodation in the IEP indicate and how we can continue to provide access to the accommodations given remote learning. And then in that plan, it will design and spell out what is the plan for that student and that family. Thank you. Next, we'd like to introduce you to Adriana DiGiovanni, who will talk about evaluations. So I just want to let everyone know that as we developed our plan, we always had the MBOE um, reopening plan in our thoughts and, and, and anything we've done. And we also had the, OS, uh, the North Board of Education remote learning guidance. These two documents were instrumental as we developed our plan for the district because we must be in concert with what the district is doing. So if you want further information regarding the things Ms. Wells spoke about, please make sure you see the 
uh, MBOE Remote Learning Guidance, and you also can see the reopening plan. Both documents are in, on the MBOE website, and I will turn it over to Adriana D. Giovanni. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm grateful to say that the Newark Board of Education was able to implement in-person evaluations for our students beginning in July and August. Um, we had individual student appointments that were scheduled with new safety protocols, uh, obviously ensuring that all our staff were trained in those safety protocols um, prior to beginning evaluations. Um, we are going to resume those evaluations in September of 2020 with in-person by appointment only, having obviously all appropriate staff conducting those evaluations at specific locations throughout the city. Um, and what are those safety protocols that we are implementing? Obviously for all in-person evaluation sites, these locations are contactless evaluation sites. All pickups and drop-offs are all occurring outside. Only a staff that are assigned to those locations are permitted in the buildings. Um, obviously, barring any kind of emergencies that may occur, parents sh should ensure that anyone who's escorting their child to an evaluation be wearing a mask, and we ask that all children also be wearing masks to these evaluation sites. Um, there will be a tent set up outside to receive the students prior to entering the building. There will be three stations to monitor the process, and there will be like lines set up so that we make sure that all the screenings and escorting of children take place in a proper manner. So what do those safety protocols look like? So we have um, four steps that must take place for these students in order before they can enter our buildings and complete an evaluation. First one is um, the child will have to complete a system screening check and answer several questions, them and their other, you know, their parent or a guardian who brings them to the evaluation. Um, if the questions are answered um, appropriately and are able to, they're able to continue on, then they go on to a temperature check. That there's, that's step two. From there, they will have a footwear sanitizing station, and then from there, a hand wa washing station with sanitizer. Then they are escorted by one of our staff members into the building. Families will be waiting outside, like I said. And then um, what else will be occurring is that in our evaluation centers, obviously we are going to have three-sided classroom dividers um, so that there is a pr um, partition between um, our evaluators and our students to, to consistently keep with our safety protocols. And obviously after every one of our evaluations, we will consistently be monitoring and having uh, everything sanitized in between evaluations. So we hope to um, be continuing to follow all our safety protocols that have been set by the New Report of Education and continue on with our evaluations for our students with special education. And I'll turn it back to Ms. Mitchell or to Dr. Fonseca. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, brief overview for related services such as speech, OT, and counseling. All related services will be provided um, working collaboratively with the teachers, case managers, and parents to support progress. Students will re receive uh, related services in a variety of ways. Um, to the greatest extent po possible, it will mirror what it looks like in person. In person therapists would schedule to maximize classroom um, supplies. Thank you. Dr. Weston. Hi. Hi, thank you, Ms. Mitchell. Um, so I get to talk about IEP meetings. So the Office of Special Education is going to follow the regular special education guidelines when it comes to IEP meetings. So case managers are going to continue to hold IEP meetings like they did in the spring through the virtual platform of WebEx. Um, as typically expected, the notice of meetings will be sent out at least 20 days prior to the meetings. All meeting participants are required to be there unless they're waived by the, by the parent. Uh, the case manager will also be responsible for sharing and or projecting on the screen the IEP as they work on the IEP throughout the course of the meeting with the related service providers, the special education teachers, and the parents. Uh, if there is a need uh, for a parent to have interpreting due to a language issue, then the case manager will arrange for that service so an interpreter can be present for the meeting. Thank you. 
So hello again. Just to wrap it up and say that the Office of Special Ed continues to be dedicated to increasing the achievement of our exceptional learners. As you've heard earlier, with all of the resources and activities that we shared with you, just a reminder that this year we will continue to also focus on increasing literacy skills during remote learning. So how does this happen? There will be additional trainings for multiple layers of staff supporting students with uh, an IEP. Teachers, paraprofessionals, related service providers, child study team administrators, excuse me, child study team members, and building administrators, and even our staff here at the Office of Special Ed. Training includes WebEx, safety training, work days for planning instruction, and ongoing PLCs. There are resources available on the NBOE webpage for students, parents, and teachers. You will see many of the items that I have discussed. So if you haven't had the opportunity to write down the name of all of the items, you can go to the NBOE webpage and see those resources. On the, res on the page, um, in the resources that I mentioned for students, parents, and teachers, there are also many tutorials. Parents, there will be academies presented to you as well. Those include live presentations or the tutorials regarding accessing Google Classroom or Google Documents, WebEx, related services, the Parent Academy through the Office of Academic Services, and additional uh, parent virtual meetings for those parents who have students with an IEP. Thank you. So I just want to thank our incredible staff that went through the presentation. We have hoped that we've given you some information, but we know many of you are waiting for the questions. So at this time, we'll turn to Christina Panetti, and she will begin to answer. So it'll be a rotation. Each of the supervisors will have questions that you've sent to the Office of Special Ed or Ms. Granado, and now we will begin. So I'll turn you over to Ms. Christina Panetti. So the question that I'm going to be addressing is staffing requirements. So what is being done to ensure that staffing requirements are met so that each classroom is compliant with IEPs for each student? The answer, the NBOE will adhere to the New Jersey Special Education Code, and we as supervisors, along with your CSTs, will ensure class size. Okay, uh, this question is about um, resource, resources. Will students who support who are supported um, by resource teachers and aides experience that same um, support? Yes, we're providing resource teachers and aides and related services during remote learning. Staffing, will those staff members be scheduled as necessary in each school to meet their IEP requirements? Yes. Um, school administrators are working with the special education staff to support te teachers and IEP meetings. Candace? So a question was presented regarding instruction. It's a two-part question. Will there be a set number of minutes of virtual live instruction daily? And the second part, will it depend on the grade level and or student classification specifically for special needs students? The information that I presented to you earlier spells out the time frames that will be dedicated. However, you will be able to see the exact time frames once school begins. But just to let you know, the Office of Teaching and Learning has provided guidance for time, and it's per each group. Again, pre-K following creative curriculum, K-8 having a dedicated time frame, and 9th to 12th grade having a time frame. Again, details are available on the NBOE website, and you will get that follow-up from each of the building principals and teachers. But what does this mean regarding supports and services for students who are exceptional learners? And that's where you will have an ability to contact your child study team member in having access to the teacher's master schedule uh, and an individualized student schedule if needed. And on that individualized student schedule, there will be time frames in which a parent can clearly see what time is ELA occurring in the live session with that teacher, what time will related services occur in a real life time with that service provider. And again, new this year, because we recognize that every family is unique and the students are unique with their individualized. 
my schedule. So there is that family support plan that will spell out the additional information that may not be indicated in the individualized student schedule or the master schedule. So case managers are available and they will be working with you and the teachers to give you a plan during remote learning. Thank you so much, Candace. We're gonna turn it over to Ms. Catherine Ogurdo. Um, I have a few questions from parents and teachers. This question is from a parent with a child who has autism, who needs several therapies, is unable to focus, and work with any virtual or therapy, virtual learning or therapy. Will children with special needs get in-person support or any other kind of support? Um, the North Board of Education is working with families to provide IEP services. We will look at each family individually to meet their needs. Please reach out to the Office of Special Education at OSE Maine and NPS k12.nj.us to discuss your child's specific needs. This question is in regards to servicing special ed students as per their IEP. What should we do if and when in-class support teachers are pulled to cover classes more often than a day or two? The North Board of Education is committed to ensuring that our exceptional learners receive their supports and services. If a student has not received a service, a teacher can attempt to make up services during the school, student's school day. If further issues continue, please contact the principal and or special ed supervisor. Um, two more questions. Will there be masks exceptions for students with disabilities? Our exceptional learners will also be required to wear masks. Um, we know that this is going to be difficult for some of our students. However, um, we will be supporting them with that. We know each student has specific needs that may impair their ability to wear masks. We will work with the families and the teachers to provide strategies, social stories, and other supports to assist students with wearing masks. question for me is, if a student provides proof to not be in school safely by following the guidelines, wearing masks, keeping social distance, what are the protocols for returning them to remote learning? Are students with developmental disabilities expected to keep six feet apart at all times? Again, the North Board of Education is working closely with families to ensure that each student has access to services and supports in their IEP. And there may be instances when the school case manager, teacher, and parent may develop an alternate plan to address the student's needs while following the CDC guidelines. Thank you, Mr. Abadai. Can you turn to Ms. Christine Panetti? She will give some more questions. So this question I'm going to address is about concerns. So what should happen if you contact your administration or the special education department because IEPs are not being followed and special needs children and teachers in classrooms are not being serviced? So if you have concerns regarding special education and you would like to make contact with your case manager first so that you can discuss your concerns, and if those concerns have not been resolved, you will need to speak with your administrator, your special education supervisor, and or the director regarding your concerns. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Joe Breton to ask some questions. Sure. Um, my question, my first question actually focuses on behavior. So regarding students with documented behavior difficulties um, that require physical intervention, such things as hitting, biting, scratching, running away, or loping, um, will those students be permitted back for in-person learning? So uh, overall, the, the education will continue to treat, to treat each student's case on an individual basis. The school, the case manager, the teacher, and the family have to work collaboratively to develop a plan that's going to allow each student to receive their IEP mandated services, of course, following the Um, the next question I have has to do about has to do with students with motor needs. What about students with motor issues that need assistance walking or physically prompting or hand over hand assistance during instruction? Well, of course, during the remote environment, that's not really an issue. But once students begin to return to in any student who has a motor issue or they need assistance with walking will receive their full IEP mandated services. If the student needs hand over hand assistance, obviously the student will be wearing a mask and the teacher helping the student will be wearing a mask as well. If the student has a paraprofessional service in their IEP, 
then that paraprofessional will be wearing a mask and or face shield, depending on the needs of the student. And Mr. Abagon, that concludes all the questions that were emailed to us. Do you have any other questions for us? No, I'm good. <laughs> I'll turn it back over to Ms. Granado. Yes, we want to thank you again for having us and hosting us. We want to uh, let all of you know that um, this will not be the last um, virtual uh, town hall that we will be having. We will be having them with the Parent Academy, the North Public Schools Parent Academy monthly. Um, so please tune in. I believe we have a few scheduled already. Um, and we'd love to come back to the NCU if we may, uh, Mr. Abagon, and, and again uh, address the, uh, the staff and community Thank you, everyone, um, and have be, be safe, please, and, and have an incredible school year. All right, well, we want to thank all of you for tuning in. Remember, you know, this is going to be edited. Um, the documents and the PowerPoints that they referenced and the resources that they referenced are available at their particular websites at the, D, at the, uh, the NBOE. Office of Special Ed, Office of Student Support Services, etc. This is going to be viewable um, sometime this afternoon on the NTU uh, website as well as the NTU YouTube channel. So you can watch it with you know a little notepad or you know refer to it as needed. There's going to be a future Office of Special Education and Office of, of Student Support Service meetings in the future. So. You know, look out for those dates. We'll, once we get those dates, we'll obviously we'll share them with you guys. Okay, thanks for for popping in. Oh, I see Bobby Palumbo's on there, uh, Alexis Armstrong, Doreen Miller. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you guys on the flip side. <laughs>